All right, today we're going to talk about another monetary policy tool used by the Federal Reserve, or at least an option of the Federal Reserve, and that is what we call a reserve requirement, often referred to as a reserve ratio. Uh, This particular tool allows the Fed to influence the money supply based upon how much banks have the ability to lend. So the basic idea behind a reserve is when you make a deposit in your financial institution, it be a commercial bank or a credit union, that institution is required to hold a percentage of that deposit on hand. Now, that can be either in the bank's vault or it can be with their respective Federal Reserve branch, but they're required to hold it uh, for the purpose of liquidity so the bank can get access to it in a fairly simple fashion. Uh, The idea, of course, is that when people go in to withdraw money from accounts, the banks will have money essentially to to give out. And that makes sense since it's obviously our money that we deposit in the banks. So the Fed, although it doesn't utilize it very often, the Fed can use this percentage as a way of expanding and contracting the money supply. So the basic idea, if you were to think about it, uh, is if you were to go into your bank and let's say that you're going to deposit uh, $1,000 and you're going to deposit this into your particular Uh, commercial bank or credit union, Uh, what the bank can then do is, let's say hypothetically that there is a 10% reserve requirement. Uh, Well, it's not really hypothetically. That is currently the reserve requirement at this point. So the bank is responsible for holding 10% of that amount. So what the bank can go ahead and do is it's then going to go ahead and it's going to loan out $900 and it will be required to keep $100 of that money as a reserve. And so this is money that, again, is going to be set aside in the event that someone comes in and, of course, makes a withdrawal, which happens very frequently. The bank has money on hand to accommodate that request. So the bank then is going to loan out this $900. The interesting thing is that that $900 is eventually going to make its way back into the bank. So let's say that, you know, Another person comes in and they get a get a uh, a loan. Uh, now the loan probably isn't going to be for that amount, but just for the sake of this example, let's just assume that it is. So they're going to go ahead and get that loan, and it's nine hundred dollars. Now, although that person may not go directly to their bank to deposit it, they're going to spend it most likely on something. So let's say it goes to a new computer or it goes to a new vehicle. Eventually, that money is going to get back into the banking system. And then, of course, they're going to require to be keep their 10% as a reserve, which in this case is $90, which in turn means that $810 can essentially be lent to someone else. And so this process continues you know, for, for many, many cycles. So you can imagine that banks, of course, are able to lend out huge amounts of money simply based upon the initial deposit. And of course, this is magnified when you have multiple depositors, you know, depositing many different uh, amounts of currency. So how does this, how does the bank or how does the Federal Reserve use this to try and influence the economy? Well, the Fed can, in theory, uh, adjust the Federal Reserve rate. So let's say instead of a reserve ratio of 10%, the Federal Reserve decides, you know what, based upon economic indicators, whether that be GDP and unemployment, we're concerned that the economy is gravitating towards a recession. So as a result, we want to provide some initial stimulus to try and kickstart the economy so that people in turn spend money. That creates demand for goods and services. That creates a need for jobs. And then, of course, people having jobs earn incomes, and then they can in turn spend as well. That's the general logic. So what the Fed can do is it can reduce the reserve requirement. So essentially, let's say that we reduce it to 5%. So instead of this initial 10% figure, you know, we're now going to have 5%. Well, with our prior example, we we're depositing $1,000 into our account. And then we were, of course, required to keep the $100. And then, of course, being lending out the 900, uh, and that continues forward. So in our current example, because we're only required to keep 5%, we can lend out $950 because we're only required to keep this 5% or $50. And then in turn, that money can go back over 
and get deposited. So now we have 950 being deposited at a future point in time. And then again, we're going to lend out another five or lend out the, the remaining balance from the 5%. So we're remaining, we're loaning out 95%, which means we're holding $47.50. So we can now lend out $902.50. Now this is very much, very different from the $810 that we were lending under the prior example. Uh, now we're lending almost $100, not quite, but almost an additional $100 that's being injected back into the economy. And so you can imagine that the rate to which we're expanding the supply of money, so the available money that's in circulation, is much more drastic when the reserve requirement is lower. Now, that in turn, of course, can cause inflation because we have an increased supply of money. We have a similar similar number of goods and services, but if, it, if inflation is not a big concern and if unemployment is relatively high, if we've got you know, very mediocre or, or no growth in terms of you know, GDP, this could be a viable option. Now, the other instance is when the economy is growing too quickly, inflation is rising. So you know, we have goods and services increasing in price rather drastically. Uh, wages may not be keeping pace with that. It's really difficult. That's very harmful because then people you know, just continue to to spend and spend and don't save because they're concerned that if I hold on to this money, it's not going to be worth a whole lot. So uh, the Federal Reserve can increase the percentage. And so we can increase it from 10 to 15 or 20, depending upon how much the Federal Reserve wants to restrict uh, that accommodative monetary policy. And of course, uh, make banks hold a greater amount of money. If you recall from a prior lecture, the banks are a distribution system for the Federal Reserve. So it can distribute less currency by holding or increasing the reserve requirements. Now, uh, be that as it may, the Federal Reserve hasn't touched the reserve requirements uh, since the 1970s. So although this is a potential option for adjusting uh, the money supply and it is a potential monetary policy tool, this isn't something that's utilized with great frequency.